you ever seen um, 320 East Rock? Tell them how 320 look when you come down and join now. You got 10 homeless tents <coughs> on one side, <coughs> 10 homeless tents on another side. It's trash all up and down the joint. Yo, I got a text from um, the, the old chief, um, Brian, Brian James, mm -hmm. the other day. Yeah. And he was like, bro, I'm praying for you. He mm -hmm. said, I just wrote down. So when Brian James resigned from being the chief, he got the, the chief police job at Chapel Hill. And kids going for free to, to, to Chapel Hill, everything. I mean, he made that move, you know what I mean? So anyway, he hit me, and he, he ain't been down there in a while because he go that way to work now. Mm -hmm. And he said he rode down, watched the street, and he said, I had no idea it was like that. And he's like, I'm praying for you. He was like, I'm praying that you get out of there, all that different type of stuff. You know, it was just like, yeah, I got that. So anyway, I'm saying that to say, ain't, it's downtown. But the people that, if you ride past that part right there, people about to be like, man, I ain't going downtown. I ain't going up in there. Am I in the right spot? This can't be the spot where the congressman go and Tracy McCain go and all that stuff. This can't be the spot. I, I just see four congressmen over here. Like, what are you talking about? There's no way that this is that spot. You know what I'm saying? The judges over there, the, the, you know what I'm saying? The chief over there, no, them people, listen. Them people scared. The, you're, the people, that guy, he's scared. The person that you're going to call to tell him how that man pulled off is scared. They not going to take your side because they don't have the perspective. If they came down there and saw that stuff, they're going to say, yeah, I don't know about this, brother. They're going to figure out a way to go around that as well. So all I know is the, you probably ain't want his business anyway. He was going to be a problem anyway. He already trying to get a discount already anyway. So those are the things that you got to realize and you got to say, you know what? It didn't happen to me. It happened for me. Adios, amigos. I'll holla at you on the next one. It's protection, yeah. man. That's it. It's protection. Universal protection. <laughs> he left because he had to leave. He had something to do. He left because he had to leave. <laughs> that had to do with the vault. It wasn't the vault. It wasn't the vault's fault. The vault. I, I told him to charge it to the game. That's it. You got you to gotta chalk it up. It's a wrap. Ain't cost you nothing, though, right? Uh, yeah, 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 that's all. That's just emotions. Man, you get over that, man. Yo, I got annoyed, super annoyed the other night. So I did the 5 p.m. class like I normally do, right? And then I'm sitting there because... Um, uh, I gave my wife the knife off. I gave my wife, you know, a pass, let her chill. She had the night off. So I stayed because I had to stay till 7 o'clock to stay there for the step class or whatever, or whatever class was coming up next. So Tracy's doing her class at 6 o'clock, and she's got a lady there for the first time. And the lady does, like, three, four rounds. She gets about 15 minutes in and everything, and um, she needs to take a break. So they put her in the lobby with me. Why the hell did they put her in the lobby with me? I'm sitting at the front desk. You know, I'm just scrolling through my phone and, you know, stuff like that. And she come up there and I got to talking to her. You talking about being super annoyed by a mindset and just like people's like thoughts and stuff like that. I'm talking about she 100% told me that when she gets to where she wants, um, she doesn't want to do this anymore and... You know, uh, oh, it was just so, it was so annoying. I don't know what she said, and I, I don't know how I didn't cuss this lady out. I'm talking about I should have called HR or somebody on this lady for just the the mindset that she had. So she's been skinny her whole entire life or never had, a, like, a weight problem or whatever, right? But now she's gained, like, all this weight, you know, kind of recently. She's old, older. And that's what I was trying to say. I was like, you're... You're, so I was like, I had to actually tell her that I don't think you even know what AWOL said. I told her that I don't think this is the place for you. I'm sorry if I was messing up Tracy stuff or whatever, but if you're saying this, then the name actually means that it's a way of life. Like this becomes a way of life for you. So our end goal or end game here is to make this healthy lifestyle a part of your life. And if you think you're going to get somewhere and then stop it, 
I think you should go in there and talk to those people because they're your peers because I don't think none of them, she used an adjective, she said ferocious. I want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to work out this ferocious or ferociously um, like this for forever or whatever. I was like, well, as your fitness level increases, then, you, you know, it, well, it, it won't be as ferocious. Like, you know what I mean? You're, you're coming in here now with, with Tracy. It won't so, be as ferocious. So it's the takeoff plane. Yeah. Take off where you got to use your energy. Lot. Yeah. Taking off. Take off. Hey, once you hit cruising altitude she wasn't trying to hear that she was just trying to get where she needed to get to and then be able to fall back and i think it's more of a you know that retirement mindset that 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 i'm gonna be straight when i get here mindset and we know like it's more money more problems we know that you know whenever you get here there's now it's a new level to actually new you know new problems new levels new devils type of thing and i don't know i just didn't i didn't have the I, I didn't have it to talk to talk to go back and forth with her, you know, on that joint. So I'm just saying, I said all that shit to say that, yo, EA man, them people, man, they they ain't got the same mindset. And if it don't look like it's downtown, then it's not easy. It's not. It's 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 threatening. You know what I'm saying? It's not pretty. Then it's threatening. If it's not, you know, what we thought, then it's threatening. You know what I'm saying? And I deal with people and trying to change their mindset all day long. You're not going to change that person's mindset that drove off and waved. And you're not going to change the people who run the platform's mindset um, because they're rolling with the people who, the, the other guy's the customer. You, you understand what I'm saying? The other guy's the customer. And they're not going to take your side over the customer side because at the end of the day, if they came out there, they're going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah, that shit dope, but I don't know if I want to come over here to experience the dopeness. It ain't your job to change their mind either. It ain't. That's why I said he attracted his tribe from his vibe. They're going to come. Forget him. You know what I'm saying? So my the, the judges that I rock with, they they rock with me. They rock with, like, they down and dirty, down to fight the round 30. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they know what stage it is in their life and it's like yo if i'm about to run for another term or something i gotta mentally transform i'm going to see my homie because the homie is going to get me right where i need to in my mind and in my life to withstand this thing what if i lose type of thing what if i you know what i mean what if i got my whole world has changed upside down well this transformation has literally prepared me for that you know what i'm saying and that's the ones that actually come regardless whether they see tents on the side of the road or not you know what I mean? Because they know where they're going to be afterwards. Yeah, push past those tents. Push past the tents, baby. I don't even see the tents. It's good and bad, though. It's good and bad. I don't even see. I know because you you I go see. you got it because you got it. I know, but it's good and bad. I want you to see the tents. I want you to see the tents. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to deter you from not coming, but it it there's so much to you know. It's so much to your personal development by seeing the tents. Um, you literally can express a lot of gratitude from seeing the tents. Now, I see, yeah. I see other things, but I don't okay. see the tents, right? I see the people. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't. Yeah, I don't see the tents. I see the people and their condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the majority of people who end up homeless, and I don't have any statistics on this, but <laughs> I think the majority of people that end up homeless have some type of mental disorder, and um, a lot of them are former service members, and you know that breaks my heart. Yes. You go and do something heroic only to be left to figure it out on your own. And, it's tough. Um, at times live in a tent, but maybe they have the training to be able to go through that. Um, oh, it, it's a challenge. Yeah, they're working years. towards a a nine sound stage studio. And they found themselves homeless one day. And that's just a part of the journey. Like Tyler Perry. Like TP. And so when we went on our family vacation this year, we went to Tyler Perry Studios and they showed um, him in his car. He was sleeping in his car. Yeah. Uh, and he's not a little man. And he had a little car yeah, right. with all of his belongings in it. And, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's part of this, the journey. Yeah. Um, but but that part right there, you literally just spelled out uncomfortable. A hundred percent. Okay, okay. I just, you got to be willing to go all the way. I think you got to bet on the whole thing if you're going to do something extraordinary. Yeah. You think there's 
many people that hit some level of success that avoided a struggle. No. Avoided a struggle and hit. Never had a, that can say, I ain't never, I ain't never have no struggle. I think there are some people who are second generation. Um, usually second generation people enjoy the labors of their patriarch or matriarchs. Yeah, I don't think he's asking about work. them though. I think he's probably talking about the ones that laid the foundation for them. Yeah, yeah. Not, first generation though. Yeah, first yeah. generation. Because no. you, you got to go through it. And I think you and I were talking about it. I, I was talking about um, my daughters not having to go to some stranger to ask them if they would help them with the real estate deal. Mm -hmm. And how this particular guy, he owns a plane, um, his son walked down the hallway. and His project was twice as big as the project I was working on. And it was his first project, and I'd done a whole bunch of different projects at that <laughs> point. And I'm trying to get this guy to help me with my project. And his son's like, hey, Dad, <laughs> this one we're working on a few Quaverina, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, I'm like what? What yeah. do you mean, Dad? He's yeah. like, yeah, this is my son. Come around here. Yeah, we're, we're doing this deal. This is his first one. We, uh, he's telling me some stories of them doing things they weren't supposed to do. I'm just like, and here I am knowing good and well that he's not actually going to engage with me at this level, asking for his support. Um, it's a different experience. But that guy was first generation. Yeah. And he knew what I was trying to accomplish. But the thing for him is, it's me and mine. Mm -hmm. right? We're building our personal portfolio for our family. I've got another friend who's worth, I don't know, he's... He says it's 150. I think it's more like 200 million. And his dad was first generation. He built a portfolio. He borrowed $70,000 from friends back in the 70s, started building a portfolio. Now each one of his sons has like 2,500 doors, mm -hmm. apartment units up in um, Philadelphia. Or, yeah, in Philadelphia. And so, well, Pennsylvania at large, they got before stuff you, before outside. You go any further, before you go any yeah. further, like, so the, we need to, people, people need to know what the hell you talk about and what you do because yeah, man. I, I think the people in the gym think you tell me. I don't got they no job, you, man. Yeah, they I just see you pulling no up. Job. Hey, man, they just see you pulling up with different stuff and then things like that, man. They know you. And they ain't never asked me a better. single question. I know. That's what I'm talking about. So this would be a good segment. But they thought I was. So. That's okay. What the sheriff of Guilford County thought I was. <laughs> what were you? <laughs> sheriff thought I was pushing weight. I mean, Jeff thought he was a big boy. Give me Kingpin vibes. Kingpin vibes. King you know the vibes. vibes. I got one Kingpin. You know the vibes. <laughs> it's documented. We got facts. Hey, you and attract the tribe on based yeah, off your yeah. vibe. What, what, tell the people Paperwork. what you do, man. man tell, so, tell them what you look, do. man, I had dropped out of corporate America, built a multi million dollar real estate portfolio, providing housing to people through the asset class of multifamily properties. Um, then left that, well, not left that. We still operate the portfolio, but we're not actively growing it right now. And really started focusing on helping people who are exiting their business figure out what's next. And that is what we're truly passionate about, getting into businesses, helping them scale, helping people get that big check so that they can go do what they were placed on this earth to do and not be trading time for money. And so we spend nope. a lot of time unpacking that and, talking to people who have really large net worths and big cash flow and options to do really cool things. Um, and so it's really interesting to go between the, um, I'll call it classes, because I don't have a better way to describe it, of people. Okay. Right? There's the people who are just trying to figure out how to pay the bills this week. And there are the people who have four years of money and they don't, they're worried about running out of money in four years. And then there's the people who know that their children's children, children are set up mm -hmm. as long as they don't make a stupid mistake that they get sued for or some other thing. And so, and watching the way they think about things and the time horizons they think in and the approach that they take to comfort versus discomfort. It, it's been, um, it's been a, over the past three or four years, it's been extremely interesting to, to see the differences. And the funny part about it, and you've been talking about process a lot. They've got a different process. They've got a different approach. The wealth, they being the, the wealthy people, the people who aren't worried about a recession. Um, and, and that approach 
just puts them in a different place. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that and somebody told me one time, they were like, you know how wealthy a person is based on not their credit store, but mm-hmm. the things that upset them. Mm-hmm. And if it's some piddly thing and they get upset about it, I swear. They probably don't have much access, right? That's and then the wealthier they are, those kind of things just kind of go away. Yeah. Um, Why do you think that is? You've got a limited amount of energy to allocate to things. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm talking to you about the shoes that you stepped on, Mm -hmm. I can't be talking to you about this next deal we're going to do or this. uh, We we could talk about the board, right? The the FHQC and providing health care to people who have. Uh, less means it's underinsured, the uh, underinsured, the underrepresented, the undercared for. Like you can't solve that problem if you're worried about luxury, right? Mm-hmm. 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 I think I think, I think too is because most people they want significance, and it's easier to grab hold to the Ooh. I'm country, grab a hold of the low hanging fruit of and being be, uh, and being the, offended, yeah negatively impacted so now I'm significant because you I'm yeah. your victim yeah and, and I can and I can tell you all about it yeah I think another perspective is that um, some people just lack passion in a lot of areas so they don't care about a lot of things so if right. there's no passion about what we're talking about cause, so we can go back and forth about a bunch of shit and some of it be small shit and dumb shit yeah. and I might jump on you because I'm actually passionate about what I'm talking about and it doesn't mean that I don't have it or I ain't going to have it. So you, you, know so you, you haven't, you didn't do the deep dive on this puffy, whatever her name is thing. Yeah, Cassie. Cassie, you, Cassie. you didn't do the deep dive no, on not that. Really. You spent a, little a whole lot of energy little. on that. You didn't deep dive and nah, so tie it back to how it, why everybody is dead at Uptown and tie it back to. Nah, I think. Know, no conspiracy theory. Nah, yeah, nah, nah. nah, nah. It's just, it's, this is what it is, man. You like, busy working on other stuff? You, That's what it was. Nah, a lot of, nah, it's, it's just. I, I see things and then I kind of almost see what it is and then I just, I roll out so I don't have to spend a lot of time on it. That makes me wealthy in that area. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't have to actually pay a bunch of attention and spend my energy on that shit. So a lot of dudes is predators already. They, they ego is up here because I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, like literally they think they can have anything they want and they can do whatever they want. And you, you see this in the streets, you see this in corporate America, you see this all on, uh, everywhere. So this is just another case of somebody grooming exactly what, you know what I mean? They wanted, did what they did and, you know, just thought it was going to go, you know, the way that they was, that everything else normally goes, which goes away or doesn't affect them in any way, shape or form. And that's all it is. And he going to still do what he do to a certain extent. He's going to be affected a little bit and it's only going to be in the present, but yo, this is nothing but like the way things go. Like this is just the way things go on every level. So you have it in um, corporate area, um, America in every aspect. It happens in NFL back offices. It happens in the fucking basketball uh, joint. It happens everywhere you could possibly think. And it's just Diddy this time. You know what I'm saying? And as a girl dad though, I I got a problem with it. Yeah, but so- I got a problem with it. uh, Well, of course, but a lot of times- our, you know, as a, everybody doesn't have a father. Understood. You know what I mean? And when you're, when, when we don't have um, a foundation, um, a financial foundation, then sometimes we like, oh, that's Diddy. Like we about to be, we about to be right. Like, okay, yeah, he, they good. You with bad boy. Like, so now you just, you, you letting her do whatever because, you know, there's there's either little or a, a lack there, right? Or you're not there, one of the two. So the the substance is either going to be you or the yeah. the money, and that's pretty much what it is in every situation. Yeah, is that's either. why I said, why why are you as a girl dad? Why are you, are you upset I, about it? Oh. Well, so it's interesting because there's there's this dynamic. And there's probably some other spaces, right? But there's a dynamic of predator and prey, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We've, we've been talking this week about uh, fear 
And what, what's the what's the responses? Oh, fight, 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 flight, 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 yeah, and then yeah, the response. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. got all the other ones, but for the longest time, it was just fight and flight. And maybe there's something other than predators and prey, but I feel like, and I, maybe I'm getting soft in my old age, though. I, I don't feel like women are prey. I feel like they're supposed to be protected. But again, I I got little girls, right? And they're not always going to be little girls. They're going to be women at some point. Right. Um, and I was, I was watching this video on Instagram, which was silly, but it was a, a boat, a yacht, a Lamborghini yacht. And two guys were trying to get on it. There was a girl laying on it in a bikini. And they said, hey, is this your boat? And she said, no. And then they said, well, how'd you get on it? She said, I got invited on it. Mm -hmm. And then she said, let me go get the guy that owns it. And so they brought the guy back. And it, it was like, you know, being an attractive woman can get you into places that decades of hard work as a man won't ever get you into right? right but i don't believe that women are prey and the thought that they are is a struggle for me mm -hmm. i feel like they do have rights i do feel like they do have a choice Absolutely. and i don't care how wealthy you are i don't think that puts you in a position where they don't have an option Got i think it. those days are long gone for sure yeah well, I think the struggle comes into what we last episode. We Do you think about. women have been preyed upon? Yeah, yes. Absolutely. So I just want to I want to make that clear because it some somebody might misconstrue what you said for women haven't been preyed upon. Oh, I yeah. absolutely do. And I yeah. think women at, <laughs> we, we were having this conversation in Sao Paulo. I think women are becoming predators. Oh, no doubt. Well, I mean, because not just becoming they've They've been predators and men have been predators. It's just, it is what it is. We live in a world, man, where you gotta, you gotta be certain things in certain places and spaces. Like you, you, some places you gonna get ate up if you don't realize that you in a motherfucking uh, a pool full of sharks. If you're in an ocean full of sharks, your ass gonna get ate up if you don't realize that yo, your ass is food. And then like, well, on, look, and, and, and this is the thing. We talked about givers and takers last mm -hmm. episode, last, last time you was here, givers and takers. And once you identify that somebody's a taker, then you can't expect them to still serve you like, you know, you're not a, you're not prey. Like, yo, at some point in time, this person is going to take advantage of me because right. this person is a taker. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it don't take long when people, one, when the, when the trust is violated, we should literally start to understand that we do not have a meaningful relationship at that point. Right. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Because um, when, when, when I trust you, I know I can count on you to do the thing that you, you know, are you usually do or you say you're going to do. And when that doesn't happen, then there's a, a breach in, in that trust or whatever. So that's one of the signs where you don't have to keep giving this person, you know, chances to, you know, to trust them again. The trustworthiness has has been chipped away. That account has been, you know, um, pulled from. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, you know, those are just little things that, you know, we got to teach our daughters to actually see and then to start to put that distance between them, you know, between him and them or know that here's a red flag or, you know, things like that. Because I think one of the, you know, you living in a totally different state um, bothers you. More, uh, yeah, it bothers you more because you're not right there to protect. And we other people are, you know, they they see those women as prey because there is no protection and that, 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 that predator mindset will, it, it will uh, become more prevalent when they see that there's no protection there. And the more they can get away with stuff, the, the more they push the envelope. And, you know, by that time is you, you mine type of thing, you know what I mean? And then I do what I want, who going to stop me? And this is that and third. So, you know, once you get to a certain level with like money and stuff like that, you believe you can do anything you want any fucking way until you get that humiliation. And this is sometimes this is a ritual for somebody to go to the next level. You know what I mean? I'm telling you. And something because you see mad people get that, that public humiliation. And the next thing you know, they they just that in third after you go away, come back. Next thing you know, they, they straight now. But then you get some people who, who say, hey, man, I needed to be straightened out. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and now everything good. And they see world, they see the world a totally different place. Right. You know, it's, it's shit dope, though. I like it. I like it all. Do y'all know who um, Coleman Hughes is? No. Who the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so 
Coleman is this young cat, man, this brother who did a TED talk okay. about color blindness. And he pretty much said, in a nutshell, that color's not the issue. Class is the issue. I agree, 1,000%. But a whole bunch of black people that work for TED was like, we're not publishing this. And then the CEO of TED, um, he kind of bowed to his the pressure, his employees' pressure. And um, Coleman, uh, they kind of, uh, what do you call it? Shadow banned his, his, his TED mm -hmm. talk. And then a whole bunch of white people came rushing to his defense and um, got him, you know, uh, they actually ended up posting it. Um, but then they allowed somebody to come on and debate him about his point of view. So it really went against everything that TED Talk is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about different ideas, different views um, that's put out to the people that, you know, we got uh, a consume guy that TED, helped Talk. Yeah, yeah, I, TED Talk. I wouldn't have picked him right here. I wouldn't have picked, picked him. But why? Uh, because I believe that if we give a bunch of white people this out right here, nothing's yeah. ever going to change. No, no, this is a black dude. If I, guy. as a black man, get a motherfuckers out, ain't nothing ever going to change. But how is it an out? Bro, you literally about to say that because we not in the same class that we still, we, we cool. I mean, we, if we in the same class, you going to be cool with me. I done seen that shit a million times. You could be a multi-millionaire. The motherfucker still look down on your ass. Shit. I ain't song? letting him off What's the hook song? with none of this shit. What's that song? Um, OJ. Yeah, OJ. <laughs> still nigga. Still nigga. Still nigga. So yeah. So anyway, he got a he got a Jay Z uh, wouldn't have picked him any. He got, he got a lot of backlash because he said it's, it's class. Class is the thing. It's not it's not race. Bullshit. Once you get even. These motherfuckers is about to figure out a way to say that, man, it's, I don't give a fuck how much money he got. That nigga still nigga. Now you jumped. You said you agree. I do agree. All right, speak on it. Why you agree? Look, man, I, the problems that people experience from my perspective, and I'm, I'm the guy, right? And I, I might not ever get invited to the podcast again after this <laughs> statement, but it's okay. Now, I'm, I'm the guy. I, I, I want to hear all of you. I'm the guy. Because you, you talked about going across the railroad track. Yeah. So when I think about the people who have opened doors for me, mm -hmm. in my experience, outside of my parents, they don't look like me. Mm. Uh, cause they the not people there. who put me in the gifted programs in school, it was a white man named Mr. Blackwell, right, in third mm. grade. The year before, I had a, a black woman who was my teacher who thought I was cheating off of Andy's paper, but Andy was cheating off my paper, mm. right? Like, and she moved me and she saw, after she moved me, she saw that somebody was cheating off me. And Did so, she fix it? No, nah, well, I mean, she didn't tell me. She told my mom. I didn't, I didn't oh, even man. know. My mom told me later. She was like, you, yeah, baby, you do it. But the, the point for me is, like, I've just seen so many people that look like me close doors, mm -hmm. make it so that there wasn't space for me, didn't throw the alley-oop so I could mm -hmm. dunk the thing. Yeah. And that, for me, is the reason why I agree with that. Now, and each level of access that I get, I've only met one billionaire, right? But each level of access I get, it, the higher up I go, the less racist it becomes from my perspective. Mm. And when I say that, I'll give you an example. Like, I think black people are racist against black people. Without question. Right. I, here's what I want you to do. Don't get blinded by the, the doors that are opening or the shit that has been opened for you by whoever. Yeah. I want you to understand that it's your duty now to don't close no doors. Or oh, open it's them. always now, about opening the door. Right. right cool. So for other black people. So you don't be racist for where you're going to now. Second of all, I want you to understand one thing is that once they perceive you as a threat, things get a little fucking different. So... Right now, That's you are not a threat to the, without question. So until you get that threat 
uh, 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 that fight or flight type of response from them motherfuckers, them, they just still the same motherfuckers. They just hiding behind some shit. And then when that shit pop up, they going to show you how that billion really fucking work mm. and close some doors and do whatever they can to keep you out of that motherfucking space. You're just not a threat to some of the motherfuckers right now. I, that, I, that's it. I, I don't, I don't want to be a threat. I, Told, but as you continue to grow and you get your billion, you might will be, be. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, yeah, you might, you might, you might not intentionally want to be a threat, but but so Ice Cube can, don't want to be a threat. But this yeah, point, yeah, he never set out to say oh, I'm a threat to the NBA. So right? yeah, am I a threat to the people who were my peers that did not open you right doors? now? I understand Ice Cube. So you can so we can all disconnect from this emotionally. What are they doing, to Ice Cube? Yeah, he's I'm unaware. After. So you know, he has, he has the big. He has three a conference. league called the Big Three. Okay. The NBA believes that this is going to be some type of direct competition to them. They've done some underhanded stuff. These are billionaire people, Honey. billionaire corporate. All these teams. I mean, is it thirty something of them? There's hey. thirty something billionaires, and they're all making billions and billions of dollars. Why do they perceive this little dude right here as a threat? I don't know how many black owners in the NBA. Jordan? I mean, there's no, well, not Jordan. No he's more. sold. Yeah, he sold. But, yeah. I mean, you got minority. You got minority owners. Right. What I'm saying is, this is the reason why we can't say that that class shit is a motherfucking uh, a joint. This, he not there. Mm -hmm. And he is becoming a threat. And guess what they're doing? Trying to keep his black ass out. But, would but he it, is it a millionaire. Anybody? He's multi-millionaire. It wouldn't be anybody who was threatening their livelihood that they would be trying to do this move on. I mean, I watch as, American games. As predators, <laughs> as as predators who want to continue to dominate a market, they do not want anyone else in that space. So I think the question so yeah, so anyone. It so would be anyone. I mean, you're Frank, saying if, we're, if it, we're, if it we're, were, we're all dairy farmers. If it was, yeah, if it no, was. No, so as as predator, listen, yeah, as for, so Ice Cube is a nigga with attitude first. No, without a doubt. All right, cool. That means you went from nigga with attitude to owning his own stuff, producing his own stuff. So he has an owner mindset, owner mentality. They can't come just buy him out, eat him up like they would anybody else. So you're saying so anybody else wouldn't be as big of a threat because they could literally come in and own them shares, take that company, make it a part of them. It would be a D league then, as opposed to being something that is standing on its own and a part of competition. It would be part of it. So if, it was, if it was Eminem, yeah, replace Ice Cube with Eminem. So you're saying the threat wouldn't be the same, or, no, or would, the treatment wouldn't be the same. What what would be different? The difference would be that we gonna go talk to Eminem's people and we gonna acquire this shit. And we gonna have a conversation and yada yada yada. We're not yeah, gonna... Eminem ain't come through the ranks that that Ice Cube did. Yeah, we're not gonna put. It's a so different we, level of resilience. Like, no, it's a different. Yeah. There's different skills. There's different characteristic traits. There's different things that I learned being an entrepreneur and an owner. I ain't just jump out and sell ten million joints. I got a whole big bunch of money. Like I am who I am because of the entrepreneur that I became because of my journey. So you got to deal with me different. So they're going to put their knee on his neck. They're going to put their knee on, on Ice Cube's neck. Take, they're going to take Eminem to Burger King. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you're saying. Hey. Mm. So that, 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 so, so it's, 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 it's multi, multi, multi-leveled. It's, it's they, because I do believe that there is, there's some merit to this whole class thing. I definitely believe there's some merit to it. However, I do believe also that racism is alive and well. I and don't so, disagree with you. Yeah. And so, um, so, and, and it's not, it's not, and here, here's the, 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 the tough part. It's not every single white person that's racist, but it's alive. And, it's a racism in the white community is alive and well. And I think you're saying be cautious to that. Keep the head on a swivel. Make sure that you understand that. And the risk is greater when you become a greater threat. Doesn't mean you're going to get taken out. Your leg's going to be chopped off. Yeah, yeah the I risk is greater you, yeah, when you, you become, when you become a bigger threat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think you're breaking it down right. I think you 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 food anyway. You mm. food anyway. Like you big fish. <laughs> not, yeah, like right. you you, you the, if you don't know what the play is, you the play. Oh no doubt. 
Yeah, so motherfuckers ain't if just you're in, if, like, you, if you're like, participating in that league and you don't know what the play is, you you are, you the yeah, play, you're, yeah, you're, you're the play. You're, so you're a piece if, on, the, if on the chess. If we board. take this to like just animal, right? Just take it primitive. We the lion always attacks solid solitary animals, right? They're not running up in the pack of wildebeest. They they getting one off to the side and then they're taking that one down. How are we? as a community creating solidarity? How are we right. putting ourselves in a place where maybe there's group economics or maybe there is access to people who can make a phone call and make a problem go away? Like, what, what's there? Or is everybody just, it's every man for So himself? the difference I think is that there are people in our community that will open doors. Okay. Right? But it's the size of the door. Okay. As it relates to, yeah. you know, the ultimate impact. Uh-huh. So people open doors without a doubt, but it's the size of the freaking door. Well, you just opened the door for somebody, if I'm not mistaken. You were talking about a meeting at the city the other day where somebody who's been in the six week challenge. Oh, was yeah, the big homie Leon. Yeah. Big homie Leon, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so I think that, well, I think one, we've been talking about this out there. This has been like a theme for the last couple of joints. We was talking about trust. Even mm-hmm. a couple of us, we posted some stuff and stuff like that. But anyway, um, I think when they come into the community, there that trust, that certain level of trust, has to be established to make sure that you know these people, you know, mean well or want to do well. And I think honestly, I don't want it to sound like a cold or crazy or nothing, but I think your transformation so is the, the religion. We already said it's a religion. Yeah, 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 but I don't want it to sound like the, uh, you know, yeah, (laughs) you know, but I think that's like your rite of passage. Like, you know what I mean? Your transformation is like your rite of passage. So we literally build like a bond when you're going through your journey. So it allows me to, you know, trust in you or, you know, of you more of your service or whatever it is you got going on. So those introductions aren't just like right off the rip. It's just like, yo, I've been vibing with um, Jerome or or Leon or Brandon or whoever, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, I know a guy that, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? And then that's how we, we link and make that work. And I just think that is super valuable. So what I've been doing lately is, um, you know, um, I, I've been looking at, you know, the whole module, the whole, you know, business, um, the way we do business and stuff like that. And I've been looking at every part of the business that adds value. And now I'm, I'm separating it. I'm literally going to separate it and a la carte it. There is going to be a price tag on every single thing that we got going on. And that's why the new mastermind group is being started. The new mastermind group is being started because if you want to get rich, if you want to get ripped, if you want to get, you, you understand what I'm saying? Resilient. Resilient. And, and respected. Yeah, then this is like, this is where you need to be because we can literally get you a play that makes you a, a new quarter million contract, a $2.5 million contract or whatever. And it's just because you've added value and you can add value and we can make this thing and take this thing to different levels where we're opening up more apartment complexes and doing more with the healthcare or the transportation, you know, stuff like that. And we be better together. Um, you know, Brandon talked about Liberty and 8,000 jobs coming there. And it's just like, well, what do we need to do to get to Liberty? And you know, why, why isn't there going to be an eight wall in Liberty? If 8,000 jobs or families are coming there, then we need to have a joint there. I know I can't do that by myself. So, you know, this mastermind group is a way for all of us to continue to, you know, practice um, group economics and just build more stuff for our entire community, period. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I just think it's all dope. I just think it's all dope the way it comes together. I'm just watching everybody because, you know, I have access to like all the information where like I kind of know what's going on with you. You might not talk to him or not him per se, but the next person I know what's going on with him. And then I say, hey, Jerome, meet Kiwan. You know what I mean? And then it's just like, yo, you guys have, you know, a lot of things in common, you know, personally and professionally. I and I think that, no, I'm not running with anybody. That's a solo <laughs> journey, man. Are, That's no, a solo journey. Right? Well, he did. He did. He did a Masogi. He did a Masogi. He, he, he did a, a real one. Wow. He did a real fall in the whole deal. Well, the, he paid $10,000 for it, too. And, and the, so the thing that 
be my thing is that he investment. paid, well, it's a great investment because we actually talked about how many people in our group pay for personal development. Right. And that's the reason why we got to make it the mastermind and have some type of you know point of entry because we don't really, certain people are not going to add to this group the way we, in the capacity we need them to add to. Um, you know, it's cool to have other groups and subcultures and sub communities and stuff like that. But in this one where we're trying to, you know, create a, a, a bigger, you know, get a bigger reach, then, you know, we got to have certain minds and, you know, ideals, you know, uh, mindsets and things like that in this group. So for him to pay $10,000 on personal development or for a Masogi, and I literally come spill this information out for free and then nobody does a Masogi, like, you know what I mean? Like somebody might as well give me $10,000 for me telling them what a Masogi is and how to, and, and how to add that to their, their life so that they could become somebody different. And, and we don't have to wait a year. This doesn't have to be an annual ritual. You know what I'm saying? Like once we understand the actual principles of Masogi, it's like, yo, how can we have this in our thing? And then boom, that's why you see me going through what I'm going through now because my stage and phase that I'm in now is preparing me for the next level of my life. And that's why I put my stuff through, myself through these uncomfortable phases and stages and shit like that. But you gotta, I just be, think you gotta be willing to pay for it. Right. Well, I, and I, I, look, man, if you don't pay for it, you don't pay attention. If you don't invest in it, you don't value it. Cause that's a luxury experience. That's not all right. No I don't think experience. it's a luxury experience. I don't think most people can afford not to do it. I think it's a necessity. Well, I don't, I don't think it's a luxury experience because what usually comes with the luxury experience is, you know, check me out. That man has never told anybody that he did a Masogi. That he, like he's not wearing that like it's a, a Gucci, Louis Vuitton or a Mercedes Benz or anything like that. How did he, now, hear, he, about, have how did he hear about the place or the program? He was seeking. Yeah. I don't know the story, but I mean, we find the things we're seeking. Facts. Yeah. Like, if you're in those mastermind groups or you're like on, on you know, stuff come across our feed that's yeah. different that comes across other people's, you know, feed but, but, and stuff again, like that. I mean, I, I'd be interested to know how he how he found that. Somebody well, I who know. went told him, I guarantee it. Well, I don't freaking know, but I know about Masogi. Yeah. Like, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I know about it. I know the benefits of it. So we take ourselves through this stuff. Once he found out about it, I don't know how he found out about it. Yeah. He took the next step yeah. and... That was probably, that, that was just appealing to him for him to say, well, maybe I can go to Florida and do it here, you know, with these people. Maybe so, so. He, so he had exposure, first and foremost, and then he had education I on some that. level. Mm -hmm. So I think a key part of to what you're talking about is making sure that there's exposure, there's education. So the, you, once your mind sees something, it can't unsee it, right? Yeah. I, I agree with the exposure part to a piece, but... There are certain people, I don't know, I, I just feel like there's an issue in the culture, but I feel like there's certain people who you know have figured something out. Mm -hmm. They're living a life that you're curious about, mm -hmm. but there's some ego that's keeping you from actually going to sit at Not their feet. The Not all the time. But yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. right? Mm -hmm. So let's just take out the small percentage of people who are willing to just go do the thing. If I think it's, I think it's, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I think it's fear instead of ego. What's, what are they scared of? What they don't know. That's all fear is. But you don't know more than you know. So are you going to be trapped by? Absolutely. Okay. I can't help you with that, right? But if, if he can. knows. You can help I think me. it goes back to the information, though. You can help me with or education. Or the belief in the information. You can help me with exposure and education. So yeah. I didn't know anything about Masogi until you brought it up. Okay. Right, so I've been digging because that's what I do. Yeah. So now, like, so if he said tomorrow, let's go do a masogi, I'd be like, twenty mm. four hours. I'd be like, right. I'd be like, let me go, you know, let me go dig and like off the rip, no education, no nothing. I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm go probably dig. gonna do it though. And so you talked about jumping off, and this yeah, is yeah. you, you, you interrupted, but but you made yeah. the point for me. I think there are certain people who come into your orbit who have some stuff figured out. And you have to be willing to go, even if you can't see. Like, I was driving through the fog yesterday on the way to a high school basketball game. Yeah. I was trusting the GPS because 100%. I couldn't see 100%. the road. You're also trusting the headlights. 
Right, and I'm trusting the headlights won't go out too, right? Right, but the headlights weren't doing me much good because it was hitting the cloud, right? But I trusted that that was going to get me to the place because I'd never been there before. It trusted me I was going to get to the spot. Right. But that we'll trust the the technology before we touch. Was that the first time you drove in the fog? It is not. But the first time I drove in the fog, I still had to trust it if I was going to keep going or I was just going to have to sit on the side of the road and tell the road it was clear. Right. And I'm just saying that as adult men, like finding relationships is hard. But the higher piece of this is if you want to go to that next level, like if you're already hitting your lid, somebody's got to pop the top for you for you to go to that next space. Yeah, and I agree with you, but I'm, I'm trying to help, I guess, help you understand why. I agree with you a hundred and. 10%. I, and I said that, I even said that before that, you know, I, I, in the way that I got past me personally, where I, I got past things is I had to just, I had to just jump and I had, jump. To, I had to model, you know, I'm a huge believer of modeling and cause you find the success that you, you, you want and then you go do what they did. Mm-hmm. And so, but that's not, that's easier said than done. If, if, especially if you've had past failures, if you have um, some, you know, trauma triggers and all that good stuff. But, and you gotta be able to push past that stuff. So I agree with you a hundred percent. So, so if, if, if what I say is partly true, how do we eliminate that piece? I don't know. If we eliminate that piece, then you got more people that's good. That's lining up to go do Masagi's. Well, what's interesting to me is there's a lot of people who let fear Mm -hmm. dictate their choices. hundred percent. And I committed to fear not being the reason why I chose to do something. How long did it take you to get to that point? I, we, we talked about the low spot. So I touched the bottom of the pool. For me, provision was part of identity. Mm. And so when all of my financial resources were taken away and I was instructed to file for bankruptcy, mm-hmm. I realized, one, I wasn't going to die. Mm-hmm. Facts. Two, I had all the experience. And three, I had some phone numbers. Mm-hmm. And so there was going to be some way for me to put things back together right. and get back. Absolutely. And so I didn't file bankruptcy, but I touched the bottom of the pool. Mm-hmm. I experienced what I felt was the most intense fear outside of a near death experience, which was a head on accident with a dump truck. So when I put those two things together and I walked into the fear, mm-hmm. experienced the fear, realized that I'm strong enough, I'm resilient enough to work through the, the, the challenges that came to me, yeah. then it was like, what are we scared of? Yeah, but did you go seek out the fear? Did you say, I need to touch the bottom of the pool, let me go make that happen? So in a way I did, cause I filed for a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I knew, I knew what was gonna happen. You knew you were gonna, you knew. I knew what was gonna happen. Okay. I knew. So you went down that road anyway. I went down the path what anyway. was going to happen financially. I knew what was going to happen. <clears throat> now, so that, did I want to go down the path? I don't think anybody So is that a matter of getting to the point where, how, how does the saying go, that the pain of uh, change. change has to be greater than the pain of staying the same? And that was a matter of pain, um, be it right or wrong, or left or right, or serving you or not serving you. It was the pain that created or forced the decision that put you on that path that gave you the calluses that no longer hinder you. So I think I created new calluses in the process. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the calluses of old gave me the confidence that I could hold the weight for the journey. Yeah. Like we're doing a farmer walk, right? Like I'm, mm, right. I'm carrying the stuff and then somebody went and put some weight on my shoulders when, right? And, right. and then I added a weighted vest on top of that. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, all right, now swim. Mm, yeah. Or the other way I like to describe it is I felt like I got beat up, mm. drove to the middle of a desert outside of the Las Vegas Strip and got right. left out there. Right. To figure it out. Probably one of the best things that ever happened to you in your life in terms of the process, not, not, not suggesting that the divorce was, but that process, that experience right. that you had to go through. Because what are you, if, if you can be courageous, so being courageous isn't without fear. You gotta Absolutely. have fear to be yeah. courageous, yeah. right? Yeah. You so do if it, you do it afraid, if, if, if we're courageous, if we're warriors, mm-hmm. cause if we're protectors, if we're providers, then we gotta go through something. I, bro, I agree. But that emotion, that emotion is is stronger than that logic most of the time. 
Well, and emotion yeah. always wins yeah. when it's, yeah. it's intense. Unless there's an intentional decision. But, like, to bring it back to the mastermind thing, I just feel like being in a community of people who have been through the things that you're likely to go through if you're an entrepreneur of some sort or a high-level executive. Yeah. Um, who's willing to talk to you about the things that you don't feel like you can share with everybody else because you're worried about whether or not they're going to judge you or accept you or challenge you right. on the things that you're doing. Say, if you're making poor choices and you don't even yeah. think about the choice that you're making, you talk about accountability a lot and people not wanting accountability, right. but the accountability is what gets the results. Absolutely. And so if you're willing to subject yourself to accountability from people that are from my perspective resilient ripped rich and re respected <laughs> right. then how do you not Be engage in something yeah. like that like i just don't like, i've been looking scared. for that my whole life fear is strong fear is powerful and it, it reminds me of um did you watch the movie ali with will smith mm -hmm. it reminds me of um he's in this the fight scene with george foreman and George Foreman, I think, catches him with one of those lumbering right hooks, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's about to go down. And he starts talking to himself. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you've been here before. You know what this feels like. Get up. Get up. You're going to be all right. You just, you, just, you just need some time. You just you weather this storm. But you've been here before. So you have, that, you have the experience of feeling the way you're feeling, you know, dealing with this fear. You know, and the whole talk was about courage and pushing past this this thing but he fell back on you've been here before mm -hmm. and so if people have never been there right before mm -hmm. on some level of touching the bottom of the pool then it's harder not impossible it's just harder so all i'm suggesting is that you know try to eliminate or try to reduce uh, the power of the fear that they don't just say I don't I don't think in my opinion that you can just say oh you scared which means you'll never benefit from the whatever the the ripped and the rich and the well, all the R's that you name I just think it's like okay so for a group y'all that's willing to they even come in this room mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna do this for you right mm -hmm. now after we do this for you and you still scared after you seen the group ahead of you that's, you know, reached the pinnacle or hit the targets that they wanted to hit. And yeah, we can't do much for you. Yeah. I, because, yeah, your, your, your boy said, I ain't gonna call no names. <laughs> your boy said, I said one day, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You put his face in it. No, 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 no. You know what he said? He said, give him some salt. He gonna drink that water. But so he came up with I can't an alternative, <laughs> an alternative to... I can take him to the water, but I can't make him drink. Mm -hmm. So he solved the, 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 the issue of whatever the preventative thing was from them drinking. He said, I'll give them some salt. They'll drink that water. So all I'm just suggesting is that there be some salt. A, some salt. Some salt. Well, some giving us some salt. But it's, I know. You, you want to save yeah. everybody. I don't. No, 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 no. I, I'm a, no. Okay. You can't, I know, you, it's hard for you because of your le level of consciousness, it's hard for you to even consider, yeah. like, what? Yeah, what is that? How yeah. dare you, like, like, like you L talked about, like L talked about, no, I just want to give people opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, the Girl, opportunity is there, they got to swipe take the bro, car. put my foot yeah. down, I'm going I'm to take her. So, so, I think what, what, I think both of you are actually saying, like, through, you, you develop a self-concept, you have a self-concept, and with your self-concept, you, you literally have created a new you and based off of those past experiences you literally are you you can talk to yourself like when Ali was down and say I've, I've been here mm -hmm. but because of those past experiences your wins and losses you literally look at yourself a certain way based off of that stuff so you create this concept based off of you know your self-esteem is created your self-image is created you know um your ideal self is all created based off of the way you process those past experiences mm -hmm. those wins and losses the results you get period and because you have certain because you got to the level now where you have the weighted vest on with the farmer's carriage because you're doing the um sit up stand-ups now it's you you're not you believe that 
yeah, I can get to the next level now, but it's going to take some more skin in the game or it's going to be a little harder or, you know, I don't know what the next level is going to bring, but yeah. um, I've passed like four levels already and, you know, the fifth level is going to be mine soon. You know what I'm saying? Well, and that improves your, your identity, right? Mm-hmm. Those promises kept to yourself and those past achievements. Well, if I did that, then I yes, absolutely got to be able to do this. But Rod, I, that creates the belief. So you're talking about trust, but do you need the belief to actually trust? Or you trust me, but you don't believe me. Or you don't believe this information. You don't believe this information is going to work Don't believe the information, but we're going to try it anyway because in the past. You. You, ever, you, ever had the an past experience, you ever had a uh, bottom of the pool experience? I'm assuming you've had multiple. You ever had a bottom of the pool experience that if you had a preview of that experience, you'd be like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, hell yeah. You already know. Bro, I'll talk the financial trauma in and of itself. Like, I had dreams. The years that I didn't file, I had dreams about what it was going to look like. And knowing, like, accounts frozen. You're going through litigation. Mm -hmm. Accounts are frozen. Like, you can't do anything. Right. But I'm saying, if you had a preview, like if you could sit there and watch, oh nobody, what's going to happen? Nah, would you be like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going down that road, or would you be like, oh hell, nah, ain't nobody no. going? Well, the preview, <laughs> right. well the so, preview, this is like going on vacation. Talking about the actual. Wait, 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 actual. wait, 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 wait. So you're going through the airport, mm-hmm. right, on vacation, mm-hmm. and let's say you're going to have to do a private security screening, mm-hmm. and you get the preview of that. The preview can't just show you the challenge. It's got to show you the triumph on the other side, and then you can decide whether or not you. That's what I mean. If you can see, I like that. Like if you can see the video, you can see the video of what's going to happen. The whole From point thing. A to point Z. The whole thing. You be like, yeah, I'm uh, I'm willing to go do that. I, I might I might choose a couple times. I might I might choose some good ones. I might right. let some go. I mean, but nah, what if you don't? What if you can't see the the triumph part? You Knowing got, that there's going to be a triumph, but we just going to show you yeah, this the hard doing, stuff you got to go through. I ain't doing solitary confinement again. I tell you that. If, if you had gotten a video I, of no, what it's going to be like, nah. for you in solitary confinement, I mean, would you be like, yeah, let, let me right go do now with some boxes in the forklift, nigga? <laughs> Fuck that shit. What you so, <laughs> so, and but what happens is we get in the four exercise seven round bout, and midway you don't be like. I'm going to quit. I think about it every time. I'm walk. No, every time I do burpees, I think do about it. it. Right, but you don't do it. But That's I what. think about it. Yeah. Every single person in there thinks about it. No. They think no. about walking away. No, Except some people think about, oh, well, let me get 22 burpees this time versus 18. Well, there's an attacking piece of it, right? But there's a negotiation. And it's funny you brought there's that up because like, I'm negotiating. Yeah. Do I want to stay where I'm at against what I think I could be? Or do I want to take this instance and realize that if I get knocked down, I get up. If I fall down, I get up. Like, that's, yeah. I hate burpees, right? Yeah. And then, you, you know, like, man, shut up, man. You're going to do them anyway. You just go ahead and do the workout. So I just shut up and I do the <laughs> workout now, right? But every time in my mind, I think about the fact Have that I quit, don't though? enjoy the purpose. I, I've quit, quit things, but I don't I'm quit my about, workout. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying we just like, yo, the, the the mastermind or the people that could benefit from the mastermind, just have a have a trough of salt. Like, yo, you ain't gonna eat that salt. Yeah. I think the people who like know the benefits of being it will be attracted to it if they. And he took me off my point because you 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 put yeah. me back on my point. And so the point of this is, <laughs> yes, sir, bring if it, you go into bring it home. the bottom of the pool, it, home, it is Jerome. better. I'm in the deacon in the church of AWOL. Exactly. head deacon. So if you go into the bottom of the pool, it's better if you see other people swimming down there, mm-hmm. and on your way down you see people swimming to the top. Right, man, listen, I can be beside this dude right here. I ain't trying to do 18 burpees. You don't have to do 18. All I'll you have to do. I'm doing 18. I'm going, I, my heart will collapse. But when you could do if three do burpees, 18, when you could do I three burpees, you, three. Yeah. you, you knew that it was possible to do more because you saw somebody else do it. And that's just my point. You, it, when you're in it, it's easy for you to believe you're the only one dealing with this. You know, it, it's unsurmountable, blah, 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 blah. You can talk. That's my go-to with my kids. I'm like, 
you know a million people have done this before, right? Or you know 10 million people have done this before, right? right? And you can take the easy way out or you can quit or you can do what these other people in the environment have done and not only have done, but are willing to do. I was, I was in Miami at one of the masterminds I'm in and I was talking to a lady and she was like, yeah, I just got back from Bali or Fiji or wherever. And I was like, okay, what happened? And she's like, well, I was just on a dive boat for a week. I was like, oh, you were scuba diving. I was like, any cool stories? She was like, yeah, my respirator ripped. And I said, oh, I don't know if that's cool. She was like, no, what was cool was everybody buddy dives. And so my buddy gave me a respirator. And she said, when it ripped, I started to swim up so I could get back to air before my lungs ran out of oxygen. I was like, oh, that's crazy. She was like, but he stopped me because if he wouldn't have stopped me, I would have got the bins. Yeah. And if I got the bins, then you know whatever would have happened. And she needed to fly multiple hours to get to Dubai or wherever she was going next. But the person that was in the space where she had this catastrophe happened, was able to give her a mask. Yeah. It was give her what she needed in the space so that she didn't get inadvertently hurt by trying to save her life. Right. And so this is what I believe the mastermind is for those people who are willing to take that step and actually come into community with people who have the goals of being resilient, ripped, rich and respected. And, respected. and if that's not inspiring for you, I don't want to give you salt. I don't want to motivate you to come into that space. I want you to be inspired to be in that space mm. because I don't want Once you remove the motivation, then the people stop. But if they're inspired, they keep going. Right. They say a leader can, a leader doesn't need a stick. 100%. Or a carrot. Right. I don't need to, to lure you or to beat you into submission. So, okay. I'm with you, man. You brought me back to my Can point. I, I appreciate you. You I derailed me. That. Can I get an invite to the thing? Oh, what's, what's, what's you the are, price? Yeah. You already what's in the, the folder. Price? You already what's, in. What's the ticket price? That's yeah, you already is, bro. Shit. What's the ticket price? Yo, so so. Uh, yeah, yeah. If I can so afford this, son, can I can I can I pay for five? Yo, before you get out of here, real quick. So, yeah. yeah, your son. Uh, your son was. I guess he was watching the podcast Monday or whatever, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, "Yo, how can I get in the group, me?" Right, so, ah. you know, I left the other group, right? Right, we yeah, left yeah, the other yeah, group, yeah, right? Wow. And, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we had. So he said, he said, I had a conversation with him. Oh, you did. I had a conversation okay. with him because they're scared to ask you. He's the only one that asks you why you left. Yeah. They're scared to ask you why you left. Yeah. And then they, he's like, "Well, why'd you leave?" And I told him why I left. Yeah. And then he's like, "Well, why he leave?" And I said, "Well, you need to talk to him why he left." Yeah. But here's what I can tell you: mm -hmm. People scared of hell. Uh, the guy's crazy. The <laughs> ogre up on the hill by the train tracks past the tents. He the nails. The urgent urban he, legends. He, he nails. I, talk, I talked to a few of them yesterday. I gave him a little spill. You did a group? You group was there. When I was talking about oh, the um, You was dead. in the back. Uh, yeah, in the I back. Uh, I was trying to get my life together. I didn't yeah. know that's what you were talking but about. But you, you, were, you were talking about I the story. Was, you, were okay. telling, you were telling a story. But oh, we had a yeah. conversation about you leaving the, the group. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying to think of what I was just saying, though. You were saying you had a conversation. He asked you a question. Oh, I guess. he asked me. Uh, um, and I was like, yo, well, the group that we're in right now, I'm like. He want to get in the group me. I'm yeah, like, yeah. that's the six. Yeah, but that's the six week challenge, people. I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, they six and seven hundred dollar paying people. Investment, yeah. yeah. So that's the group that we're in. So he pointed to you and he said, he pay you six hundred dollars. <laughs> 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 I laughed at that. No, nigga, I missed man. that, man. I laughed at it. Yeah, yeah like, like I said, I was trying to get my life together. Why pockets, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, he paid well, you six do, I guess he couldn't believe it or something like that, do. man. I was like, man. I said, that's my nigga. He was like, all right. I was like, that's my nigga. Like, you know what I mean? He was like, all right. I respect that. So that's fascinating <laughs> to me, man. We talked about the ten thousand dollar Masogi, right? Yeah, yeah. And we, you, you said most people don't spend any money in personal development. This is mind blowing to me. I, I shared this with Rod, but like this year alone, on average, I spend about twenty two thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. in development between mm -hmm. masterminds. And I'm not counting the travel to get to stuff. Right. This is just like dues yeah, fees to get in it yeah. for masterminds, coaching, et cetera. And so somebody being fascinated by a person paying 
seven hundred dollars, a thousand dollars to get access to the people who are going to help them achieve their goals baffles me. Yeah. What has it always baffled you? Or did you just write a check the first time? So you- here's what's interesting, and I, I was a little spoiled. So I had two scholarships for college, so I didn't have to pay for my uh, undergraduate education. My employer paid for my graduate education. And so there was a point where I didn't value education, but I was still an employee. Mm. It wasn't until I became an entrepreneur that I understood the value of self-education and Mm. investing in yourself. And so what's always been important for me as an entrepreneur, because I, I experienced people not actually appreciating what I felt like was a value I was sharing with their life. It's, compensating the people who are contributing to my life in a meaningful way. And so I struggle with the thought of takers being around because I know what having to serve takers on a regular basis does to a person who is what I consider to be source, right? When you're connected, you become source because other people aren't conscious enough to be connected. Yeah. So I think, um, and again, I can help you with that from my perspective. So at one point in my life, the $600 would have been a cost or expense. Mm-hmm. This point in my life, the $600 is an investment yes, with the expectation of some return. Mm-hmm. So it's just perspective. It's lens. Mm-hmm. So for a 20 some year old, it's probably oh a cost well that may have that has has never technically invested in themselves it may be considered a cost and not an investment and personal development is my biggest expense mm-hmm. right it's more than mortgages car the like it's more investment. than every you don't look at it as a bill well when i just think about you don't look at it as a, a cable bill or a internet bill or a, those are things of consumption you make Millions. It, right. you it, say, it makes a difference. 22,000 so I can bring in stuff like a that. million a month. But the, this investment, and so if we go back to the uh, cash flow quadrant that I talked about last, mm-hmm. right? Like the people who are trying to put money as investors and put money in your 401k, mm-hmm. instead of investing in themselves right now to make themselves more valuable people, yeah. becoming the more valuable people through that investment, I just think they got it backwards. Mm-hmm. Like, Every dollar that goes out in personal development is going to come back Mm -hmm. in multiples. It might not come back this week, this month, this year. It might not come back in five years, but there could be a thing from that at Mm -hmm. some point that just changes everything. And you only need you only you only need to be right one time. One time. There it goes. One time. I was I was I was at a mastermind with Damon John, and he was. He always picks with about the other sharks when he's talking. He was like, Mark Cuban was only right once, man. Once. He was only right once. He's richer than me. He was Max, only right Max once. Max talks about, you know, we see his 13th thing that yeah, went wrong. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first 12 went wrong. Yeah. I only, you only need one. You just need that one thing to hit. I just heard Dennis Kimbrough say 18 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Average millionaire or something like that. Yeah. You got to keep going through 18. it, man. But you got it. But like you said, yeah, you got to push yeah. past. You got to push past the fear too. Man. Absolutely. But do do we have an investor mindset? We is who, the question. Who is we that, first? Are you talking about the culture? Talking about black people? I, I'm black talking men? about the people who are going to be resilient, <laughs> ripped, yeah, rich. That that person does that, and respected. That's, that's the avatar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 they, they, yeah. The avatar absolutely does. So if you're an investor, this masterminds for you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Per. Per point blank. What else y'all got, man? Hey, y'all man. supposed to talk about some other stuff. Yeah, it's that 75 minutes in. Yeah, we good. Like, we, that joint was fire. And our producer, you know, he told me he had a hard stop. And then he said the talent got the, got the juice, but producer oh. got a hard stop and we oh, got to yeah, stop. Yeah. Right, we, well, you know, shit, I guess we got to come, we got to bring it back then. <laughs> we got, we, we ain't cap it off. Say rewind, rewind, yeah. rewind. Um, yeah, I guess that's it, man. We ain't got time because we'll, 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 any other topic we bring up, it'll be a 30 minute conversation. So Yeah, most likely.
So uh, can I tell people to thank you? Can I thank them for you know pushing the bell? Because <laughs> I, I got criticized. What did they, did they May push? I, it? I, huh? Did they push? It? I'm going to thank the people who did push it. What, uh, ex- exactly. And you know, I'm so when you it, talk about the people who did do something, yeah. you got this thing. Um, you know, so you got other people going. What they do? They want to be included. I got you, man. Go ahead. Do, you, do your thing. Uh, yeah, Promo. they want to be included. I feel Because they get special things. I know how many subscribers we got. I mean, hey, it's north of 5,000. I Now, next week, if it's only north of 5,022, <laughs> then I know that the 1,000 views that we got, yeah. only 998 nah. of them, oh. look, they did not subscribe. Okay, right, right, yeah, yeah. So while you talking to them, too, I'm talking to 998 people. That's why, we, hey, that's why we're a team, baby. That's right. We get the whole 1,000. Accountability and responsibility. <laughs> so I want to thank the people who have pushed the buttons, who have subscribed, who have gone to Apple, gone to Spotify, given us a five star rating. Um, you know, you left a comment on the joint on Instagram. Two you left a comment on the joint on YouTube. I just want to say thank five you. Five. I appreciate Instagram. You. No, you're right. What, I, what yo, did you want to tell? Thank you. What do you want to tell other people? Gracias. What do you want to tell other people? Gratitude. That's it? Appreciation. <laughs> Maximum gratitude. <laughs> Max gratitude, nigga. You got it. <laughs> Yo, man. That's it. I think that's a wrap. Yeah, so yeah. with that, I'm Rob Brown. I'm Lynch Hunt. I'm Jerome Myers. Hey. <laughs> and y'all just witnessed another dope in-game podcast, Ooh. man. Ooh. Well, I'll let y'all the next one. Shout out, Max. Max. Peace. Peace.